Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my dear viewers, welcome back to the Brawl Masters Arena. We're about to kick off the show, we're kick about to kick off the first match here. A women's Fatal 4-Way match, the bell has swung and we're heading off and already full-on chaos has erupted as we have four of the uh, toughest women in the entire series going up against one another. One fall competition, only one of them will be prevailing tonight, but and it could be honestly anyone's game. We have su such great talent all around here. Snow Princess, Yuri and Black Rose, Julia as well as Ashley Woodward and Burn Storm. And Yuri already going for the first cover, the referee. Well, the referee do doing his business of running around like a headless chicken. Not getting in the position and not allowing even a one count on that. But allowing Yuri to switch targets, going after Burnstorm now and Julia picking up pieces where Yuri left off with Ashley. Nasty double, double stomp there and Yuri now trapping herself for some reason, trapping herself in the ropes. Not sure what the what what the idea was there, but uh, at least you, you were secure. Well, uh, up until the moment the Burnstorm came in with the sling blade. Speaking of Burnstorm, now setting up against Black Rose Julia, dropping her down with the Brain Buster. Julia escaping, avoiding any further harm to herself as Burnstorm gets pulled down. And drop kick to the spine. Following that up, Ashley and Yuri now. Going up one another, well, Ashley going up against Yuri, it seems like we have a bit of double teaming action here. Well, never mind, Ashley going after Burnstorm. Solid drop kick, planted straight to the face, and here comes Julia back into the ring, ready to cause some chaos. So it's Yuri as well. No, oh, break up there. Full on, full on chaos, no one is sure who, who should be hitting. Oh, beautiful takeover there. DDT. Against Snow Princess Yuri, and not her one Burnstorm really just laying it out. Yeah, you can just feel her gloriousness. Even Julia just got a neck breaker against Ashley, who's taking refuge on the ringside now. Very much so. Julia gets taken out by Burnstorm. One of the greatest champions ever. Uh, previous champions to have. Well, one of the greatest people to hold a title. Burnstorm had a legendary career in the third season of the Brawl Masters and honestly she could very well be the toughest competitor out of all these women in the ring. Right now Julia and Ashley still in the, inside the ring. They get a bit of breather here, no Ashley getting, getting up and smashing their lower, uh, lower back against the turnbuckles. We have Snow Princess Yuri is up against Burnstorm on the ringside, gets a German suplex. As she's completely taken down, another DDT. Solid impact. Ashley trying to figure out some kind of attack against Julia, but taking too long to think there and gets paid for it. The rose has been planted and Julia goes for a cover. We have one, we have a two count and we have a kick out. Stomp right onto the arm and know that about it, about to set up with her submission maneuver here, yeah, entwining Rose locked in, the thorn striking to the neck, there's no escape out of teeth once she taps out and Black Rose Julia secures a victory and for some reason Burnstorm is celebrating this as well. I, I, I do not think there was a tactic effort here, here anyway, in whatsoever, Julia just the only person capable of taking advantage of the situation, and oh boy, did she take advantage of the situation here. No no one contesting her, she had free reign over Ashley, able to get a secure victory in this fatal four-way match. Here is your winner, Black Rose Julia! A solid opening match to tonight's episode of the Pro Masters. Once again, welcome everyone, welcome dear viewers to enjoy the following wrestling program. We have a one hell of a show for you as always. Coming up right after this one, we're gonna be getting a one-on-one -on -one fight between Katsuyori Elizabeth versus the women's Grand Prix champion Rachel Curtis. 
then later on in the show we're gonna be having the first official tag team match of the of the women's uh, women's team of the Cooper Screw. That's right, Alexia Regadotir and Nguyen Lee May are teaming up in their official tag team match uh, debut against the Garcia sisters. Then coming coming up on the later half of the show, it, we are gonna be getting. A good old selection, Magic Maggie gonna be going up against Selena Bojam, two of the toughest women, honestly, in the history of the show ever, going face to face. And following that up, it's gonna be Philip Foster, the men's martial arts champion, going up against Thunderstorm Andre in a rematch after the last week. And in the main event of tonight, we have Kelly Baker once again. Going after Anna Cross and try, trying to try to set the new foundation or try to take down the new foundation all by herself. Coming to you from Helsinki, Finland. I am your host, Kubari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. Very disciplined martial artist here, Katsuyori Elizabeth, who made a quite a name for herself during the third season of the Brawl Masters as one of the greatest standing professional martial arts champions. Remains to be real excited. Uh, well, yeah, remains with great excitement to see whether or not she'll be trying to retake the martial arts title from the current title holder, Selena Bochamp. Or if she's gonna be going after another title at Pro Masters 100. Who knows, maybe she could be aiming for the Grand Prix champion herself. After all, she's gonna be facing her off right here, and right now. From Canada, the women's Grand Prix champion, Rachel. Who would have thought that Rachel Curtis would be, would be getting into this kind of position to be the top dog of the women's division of the Brawl Masters? Absolutely fantastic. Very unassuming girl, but one with a huge opportunity. Winner of the Royal Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble 2023, and with that victory, able to earn herself the match against Kathy Gardner and then take away her Grand Prix Championship belt, now carrying the title very proudly. And she definitely needs to be holding it with pride as she's gonna be defending it next Thursday. The bell has rung and the second match is on. Katsuyori Elizabeth, very powerful, very lethal striker, very lethal technician all to get her and there we have Rachel Curtis, the women's Grand Prix champion, currently being taken down, snapmare, and a kick to the back. No, not quite the introduction you would have expected, but Katsuyori is wasting no time. She's, she's a full-on uh, efficient warrior. She knows what it needs to be needs to be done. 
Rachel Curtis able to turn things around, setting up a single leg camel clutch. Grasping at the rope would be an option, but doesn't look like yes, he takes the opportunity to distract Rachel. Oh, not enough for the distraction knee lift. Stops that plan right there and then be lifted up and sent face first on the turnbuckle. Hooks up the leg. Rachel going for the cover. We have one and a kick out. Face first and the mask first. You gotta. You always. I, I always fun, wonder whether or not that helmet and mask combination is gonna be actually softening any blows. Is it gonna be absorbing any blows? Or is it just gonna be making them harder? Because I don't. I don't expect there to be any batting inside either of them. Heavy forearm to the face of Rachel Curtis, Katsuri Elizabeth taking control of the situation, taking control of the fight, trying to, trying to chop away, not not able to connect for some reason, or maybe she's, uh, well, I don't know what that was, what that kind of display was. Beautiful head scissors take down there from Rachel as she's getting the control of the fight back to her side, setting up careful mat slam, drops. Elizabeth down on her back and now head scissors locked in. Well, I don't think if a submission hold is gonna be doing very well against the arm, or I mean you're gonna be crushing it, but yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I I, I just don't think that's an, as, as effective as, as just pu pure on striking. Another head scissors into the cover. We have one, we have kick out at two. Rachel definitely hoping, hoping to put this match to a closer real quick. She must have realized just what kind of a brawler Katsuyori Elizabeth is. And now locked up in the, in the Canadian backbreaker. Pulling on the body down onto her shoulder. Rachel Curtis with full control. No, she loses the, loses the control. Elizabeth able to get escape. Still keeping with the control. Keeping hold of that. Kabuto helmet definitely giving her full full help in this situation. Lifting up now. No loses control. Katsuri Elizabeth. Beautiful German suplex reversal. Turning things around and hopefully trying to get the control back to her side. Ne no, never mind. Gets lifted up. A drop down. Throat first onto that rope. Yeah, real unfortunate for her. Doesn't seem like she has any kind of armoring. Protecting her throat area. She's a chest, a chest armor and the helmet and the mask. Uh, nothing to protect the throat. Rachel keeping up with the pounding. Just pure, pure on punishing. Trying to wear down her opponent as best she can. Close line. And then once again, head scissors locked in. Try to get a submission victory here. Katsuri Elizabeth in a poor stra strain here. But yeah, looks like looks like the armor is actually providing use really useful in a submission hold. So far able to evade three of them. And Rachel Curtis, the powerhouse, you can only imagine what kind of a strength she's bringing into those holes. Heavy chop there from Elizabeth, who is now trying to set the champion the Grand Prix champion up against the rope. Chop! Sets up the leg, pulling it across the middle rope. That's gonna be burning. Missing the chop, I don't know what that was. Ooh, heavy throw thrust. And a forearm smash to the face. Elizabeth once again with the control. Going for punches. Oh, what a slap. Picks up the Grand Prix champion once again. Locks the head up, look at this. No, sets up. Beautiful Kiri Fuda driver locked in. Her submission hold, devastating submission hold, I don't think. Yeah, you can see, she's fading away, she's trying to figure out any way possible out of that. Katsuyo Elizabeth letting her go. Rolls up with the leg and goes for the cover instead. We have one, we have two, and we have a, no, shoulder up. Getting onto that rope with that and ensuring the break up before a free count. So close, but so far away. Missing the chop. Sidestepping out of the way. Rachel Curtis able to avoid the damage, but hit for what sounds. Springboard drop kick. Drops the champion down for a uh, knee lift to the face. Katsuri now preparing for some high air, high risk maneuver. Comes in with the splash. 
Almost gets caught with the rope there. It looks like she's preparing to strike one more time with the kidding foot at driver. Hooks her up. No, this time Rachel Curry is full on prepared for that one. Able to turn things around and able to send Elizabeth over the top rope. Sets up drop kick to the outside. One, one effective way to send your opponent crashing down hard. Following pursuit, Rachel Curtis now on the ringside as well. Lifts up. Ooh, gets countered with a bulldog. Wrenching the arm, another reversal. No one, no one's here real get, uh, getting getting the advantage. Well, Rachel now definitely getting the advantage from the cheering of the fans. Although it's it's been apparently scientifically proven that the admiration of the fans does not actually improve your fighting ability. Well, that doesn't seem to be stopping Rachel, who's full full on enjoying the cheers of the crowd on her side. Ooh, well, she didn't enjoy that. Sent straight into the steel steps and got your Elizabeth back inside the ring. We have a seven count now. Referee getting to eight count. This could end up in a disqualification. Rachel rushes back in. And the fight continues on. Cutting hold of Elizabeth and sends her in the corner. Top rope now. Poor position. Oh, able to counter. Able to evade. Pretty sure she was gonna go for the top rope brain buster. Heavy chop, no, locks up. She's being caught. Not able to evade this one, the brain buster. Rolls up with the leg and here she goes for the cover. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Yeah, that shut down Katsuri Elizabeth without a doubt. But still, I gotta wonder, uh, or rather, I would wager on the fact that Rachel Curtis was not prepared for this kind of opponent. She was not uh, prepared. She did that not. She did not realize in what kind of a jeopardy she, she was facing off against Ray, uh, Elizabeth in the ring. She had to kick it up a hole and not turn notch, fighting like it's, as if this was a title match. Yeah, right here we had the Kiri Fuda driver almost tapping out of that one. Horrible strain on the throat. And the finishing brain buster. Nonetheless, it's a great victory for the Grand Prix champion. And definitely a good warm up, but definitely good good showcase. Not to underestimate her opponent. Next first day, she's going to be defending the Grand Prix title, and she definitely needs to put her A game in, into the match if she's hoping to retain the title. Who her opponent is, we will find out uh, on first day. Stepping into the ring next, we have We Are Harvey going up against Sweet Marie. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring. Representing the geeks from the internet, V R Harvey. Absolutely a fantastic brawler going into the ring now. Right now we have V R Harvey, a testament of talent and just a proof on that you do not need to start out great to end up great. Teaming up mostly with Kathy Gardner, but tonight taking part in the singles competition and facing off against a season one veteran brawler. And accompanied by Mark Hunter, representing the Anarchist. From Helsinki, Finland, Sweet Marie. 
Murray definitely are the more excitable, more uh, pleasurable people in the Pro Masters. But one who always goes for the extreme, who always goes for the joy of it. Yeah, this matchup right here is gonna be something completely utter. Throw out all the trauma, throw out all, all, all the competition. These two are here just to have fun. Right, the bell has swung and the third match is on. We are Harvey and well, we are Harvey already starting out with a solid neck breaker against Sweet Marie. It's gonna be definitely Definitely an interesting fight to see. Harvey has been getting more and more attention to uh, thanks to her own talent only. Look at this. Oh what a beautiful beautiful neck breaker and thinks that's it. We have one, we have no kick out at one. One and a half, almost a two cup man knock fight. Yeah, Harvey definitely it seems like he's not gonna be wasting any time tonight. Already going for the cover after only two neck breakers. Frog splash, yes. Maybe maybe she has been training harder than ever. But that doesn't mean you can take on Sweet Marie lightly. She is an absolutely fantastic fighter. Excellent high flyer setting up already. Look at this beautiful Frankensteiner into the cover. We have one and a kick out. Yeah, turning things around in such a quick flash. You can just expect that from, from both of these. A running arm breaker. Sets the other arm up. Goes for an e-drop arm breaker. Very efficiently taking care of both of the arms. Uh, uh, one after another. Rolling neck snap now. Murray displaying that acrobatic talent, that athleticism of hers. Diving in with the elbow straight to the chest, hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. We have one, we have a two count and kick out. Getting so close, Mark offering her a piece of advice there. Let's see whether or not she'll be taking it. What the advice was, I don't know. Ooh, missing the springboard. Harvey instinctively getting out of the har harm's way. Well, not able to get out of that one. Marie on the apron now, gesturing at Harvey, comes in with the springboard, Hurricane Rana. Yeah, this is, she's just go, going on full-on jumping fever right now. Dives in with the shooting star, hooks up the leg and goes for the cover. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Wow. Just wow. I, I'm, I'm speechless, that, that was just... Well, there was not much to talk about. Harvey Fozzi came in with a hot shot. Ended up getting shut down cold. After Har uh, Marie got the advantage here, she did not let it go. Giving Harvey a strike after strike of heavy impact. Weaponizing her body and with that able to secure a victory. And a be very beautiful shooting start uh, to finish it off. Yeah, I suppose whatever Mark said to her was was the key to victory. Sweet Marie. Yeah, that was that was real quick, real efficient. Like, not not the type of matchup I would have imagined seeing these two coming into the ring. But hey, this is just Marie giving giving us all a surprise. Coming up to the fourth match, we're gonna be having a two on two tornado tag team match. Alexia Regadotti and Lee Mei Nguyen teaming up against the Garcia sisters in the Cooper's Crew first official tag team action.
The following contest is a Tornado Tag Team Match. On the way to the ring, the crew! Captain Cooper, unfortunately unable to be with us tonight. Apparently he had some pressing business go going on with a shipment of some sort, but nonetheless, Lee May and Alexia here representing the Cooper's crew in their first official tag team debut. We had Lee May going up against Alexia earlier this first day in, a, in hopes of Lee May getting into the crew and looks like she did manage to actually impress and get approval from both members of that team. Both Alexia as well as Captain Cooper himself. Let's see whether or not this dude will be able to tag team together. That's going to be a whole another hurdle to go through, especially considering who they're going up against. Season 2 tag team champions. Gloria and Isabella Garcia, ruthless women, all together with wonderful tag team uh, display. I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's about being related to one another, but for some reason, sibling tag teams always have proven themselves to be just on a whole another level. Maybe it's just that sibling connection, you know, brothers and sisters always work to, uh, to get her the better than any, any other uh, made up team. I mean, just uh, so just look at the ta title history. We have the Hunter Brothers and the Garcia Sisters as the Season 2 Tag Team Champions. Both of them went going undefeated. Let's see if it or not history will be repeating itself next Thursday as the Garcia Sisters will be one of the teams in the Tag Team Championship fight. The Wrestling Alliance Championship title. Bell has been rung and the Tornado Tag Team is on. Cooper's crew with their debut match against, honestly, the tough, toughest women's tag team uh, ever. The Garcia Sisters. Alexia able to start off against Gloria, but Isabella keeping Lee May down. Definitely the right tactic here on both teams, making sure that the High Flyer stays grounded and uh, ensuring that the High Flyers do not meet, otherwise it's going to be full on. Uncontrollable, uncontrollable chaos. Speaking of chaos, we had a reversal versus Gloria able to reverse against Alexia, but Lee May now able to get to the top. Now the high flyers on both teams dictating the basic. Oh, beautiful shooting star from Lee May and single leg drop kick from Gloria. Alexia ducking out of the way of that splash. And Isabella with her arm track reversal. Yeah, we're, we, you're getting equal reversals either way. Oh, never mind. The Garcia sisters now taking full control of the fight here. Both of the crew members are down. Bo legs being tormented, pulled apart. Gloria setting up. Double leg drop. Rolls through. And Isabella now. Ooh, knees right to the midsection of Lee. May not done yet. Gonna be doing it again. Very torturous. Keeping up with the torch and pulling on the leg. And spine buster there from Gloria Garcia. Not sure whether or not that's going to be providing much effective. Considering Gloria is not known for high power maneuvers. Well, she's going to try to get the cover. We have one and a kick out. Isabella trapping Lee May in the corner. Trapping the arm. Leg drop from Gloria gets Alexia there. Alexia able to make a retaliatory strike. Oh, and... Yeah, Isabella going with her usual, pulls the ma head down and goes for the cover. We have one, two, that should have been a freak out, that should have been a freak out. If the referee would have just dropped down and started counting, that would have been a freak out. Snapmare takes down Lee, Lee May, and now getting the hip attack twice. Swinging around and bring his, brings it out around Price. Heavy impact right there, but not done yet. Spin kick locks up. 
ripcord into a Spanish fly. The Garcia sister special. We have one. We have two. And we have a... F no, shoulder up right before a free count. Lee May still holding on. Alexia offering no kind of... Uh, Effort to even try and say, well, I suppose she has pl she's plenty busy with Gloria full on giving her an onslaught against the barricade now. While Isabella un launching her own offensive against Lee May. Gloria keeping guard, and here comes Isabella with the splash. Yeah, the Cooper screw definitely not doing that well. There, there needs to be a break up here. Once again, Isabella for the victory. We have two and we have a three. Well, that, that, was, that was certainly something. Definitely not, not very promising sight for the Cooper's crew here. Not only lo losing their debut match, but not showing that much team, team fighting spirit all, all together. Meanwhile, the Garcia sisters. At full on control, they they knew what they were doing. They set out for separation, divide and conquer, and that definitely ended up bringing the victory here tonight for both of them. Yeah, Lee made us completely helpless all alone in the ring. I def I'm definitely sensing a ta tag team training session coming up for the crew. Statement victory here once again proving why why these two are the toughest women tag team in the Brawl Masters. Let's see whether or not they'll be able to get the tag team championship titles for themselves next first day. Coming up to the fifth match of the night, we're going to be having a one-on-one -on -one fight between Wolf Anderson and General George. are back Wolf Anderson and Bert the Valkyrie with Wolf taking the spotlight tonight in his first men's contest tonight George with yet another opportunity here to prove himself to be the disciplined warrior that he is. I think of it, we're getting we quite an interesting match up here. We have two people who have definitely seen war before. Granted, they have been very different types of war in completely different eras, but nonetheless, two warriors meeting inside the ring here. Be disciplined versus ferocity. And General George definitely about to bring down the law on Wolf. There we go, the bell has rung, and we're on halfway point through the show here. Wolf Anderson and General Store, uh, General George, start starting out the men's fights tonight here 
looks up both of the legs here, pulls, oh, what a, what a nasty pull. He was turning, tur turning things around, General George able to get back up to his feet, knee lift to the midsection, and takes the control here from Wolf, set up, Hangman's neck breaker. And now climbing to the top. It's a striker versus powerhouse, and the powerhouse just came crashing down. <coughs> Into the cover, we have one, we have two, and a kick out. Take a bit of speed here from the ropes here. It comes in with the senton. Nothing fancy, but definitely something that will cause a good amount of damage. After all, that's a full on male human body dropping down on you. And George trying to get the crowd on his side, and definitely he has. He definitely has some fans in the crowd tonight. People cheering on him, and he's giving on a quite a quite a show so far. Going for punches now. Wolf is being completely crowned. The wild animal, the wild Viking, not allowed, not allowed to get, go for a comeback. But he doesn't need anyone's permission to do that. Sets up, locks up the arm, brings it around and twists it. Nasty, very nasty pull. Setting up, trapping the leg. Submission hold being applied and gets a boot for that. Yeah, did not fully think think through with that one. Stomp right onto the arm, another one setting up. Yeah, George demonstrating how a proper submission hold is being applied. A single leg camel clutch locked in. Wolf able to evade that, slide out of the way and get back onto the offensive. Knee lift to the midsection, not done yet, gonna be back, he back heel axe kick. Drops down General George, setting up, getting out of the way, Northern Lights suplex, keeping up with the hold, into the falling, swinging neck breaker. Comes in with the spear. Wolf, full on, full on fire tonight. Rolls up with the leg and goes for the cover. We have one, we have two, and we have a, no, shoulder up right before a free count. So close, but not quite there yet. Yeah, maybe the spear was definitely lucky. Should have taken mo more momentum on that one. Had he, had he uh, got a more speed on it, he'd know that about it. That would have been a free count. General George, though, not about to let that happen again. Takes control of Wolf, sending him in the corner and up to the top turnbuckle. The worst position imaginable. Lifted up into a military press, into a slam. Face first under the canvas. Wolf goes down. And here comes. We have one, we have two, and we kick out at two. The Viking warrior still has something left in him. Whether or not it's gonna be enough remains to be seen, and whether or not it's gonna be there's gonna be anything left after this one remains to be seen. The Boston crap locked in. General George is finishing maneuver here, and you can definitely see he's bringing a lot of pressure onto the back. There's no way out of Wolf for this one. No, let's it go. Felt the, yeah, you could see that the hold was slipping out of his hand. Double knee face breaker now drops down the Viking warrior. General George onto the top rope. Comes diving in with another splash into the cover. Here we have one, we have two, and we have a three. Tonight, discipline has won. So, the replays here, both definitely tried his best with that. And the spear, yeah, you could see that spear right there. Had he picked up more momentum. That would have been a free cut, but he just went immediately on it. Did just right, like jumping at your opponent. No speed, no whatsoever. Loses a momentum and loses the impact. George able to make a successful recovery after that with the military press. Here is your winner, General George. A excellent victory, a very, very emphatic victory. Here against the season one veteran brawler. Stepping into the ring next, we have 
William Styles going up against a season one veteran brawler, Outlaw Casey. Tonight, about to continue on his uh, match, uh, th this journey to domination. And he chosen to go after all the season one veteran brawlers, try and prove himself worthy of the Brawl Masters. With the next opponent line up, Outlaw Casey, definitely one of the toughest male contenders out there. Or do, be doing really well only only with one loss so far against Punk Hercules, but I'm I'm certain that that time will come for a rematch on that account. But for now, gotta get more victories under that belt. And his opponent from the Wild West, weighing in at 256 pounds. The ladies' man, Outlaw Casey! The original Lone Rider, the original Heartbreaker, the original musician, the man, the legend, the man who's all about having a good time, it's Outlaw Casey. Here to impress the girls, impress the ladies. So what if the men happen to be impressed as well? He's a very excellent fighter when it comes down to it. Go the belly strong and William Style facing off against Outlaw Casey and well let's let's just see I I I wouldn't expect this match honestly could go either way Outlaw Casey definitely a very seasoned veteran in the Pro Masters but William Style so showcasing the ability and the tenacity to go after even the high profile marks Casey able to get the initial control of the match to his side drops down knee. Right onto the arm, picks up William. He go, William going for a springboard here. Clothesline takedown. Now taking your eye off the opponent. Definitely game costing Casey here. Sets up. Beautiful lift on. Ooh, what a beautiful mo m power move there. William hoping to get a victory here. One count only. Yeah, not, not much. Not much an effect with that one. Discus punch to the face. Run, runs to the corner. Not doesn't do anything in there. Interesting choice. Lifting up vertical suplex. Yet another display of immense strength here. Coming power bomb. Keeping the lock. No keeps the knee. G gets the knee to the face. Casey is Casey is being pulled apart. Maybe running top lock. Elbow to the face. Catching hold. Slams the face down. That will definitely turn things around for Casey with the successful comeback into the cover now. Two and a kick out. That will definitely, at least it will slow down William if not altogether put brakes on him. His advantage. Drop kick misses as William is able to get out of the way. Catching hold of Casey. 
kick to the midsection and lift off into a power bomb. Pin helplessly carried around and sent outside. Talk about sending a statement to the entire roster. Yeah, all, 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 all the veteran brawlers better be watching out. William is at this rate gonna be coming for you. Another power bomb head first onto the apron. That's gonna be leaving the head ringing. Uh, if you're not too, too careful, if you're. In the worst case, it's gonna cause a concussion. Take down fr from behind. As William is full on dictating the pacing of this match right now. Lifting upside suplex. Casey once again dropped down, and as William is demonstrating that power style of his. Steps back outside to break the count, but Casey has had enough. Or at least has, has enough of, of William, hasn't had enough of the crowd. Oh, better what's out. Springboard action comes crashing down, and Casey with the receiving end. Knee to the face. I, I, can't, I honestly can't believe Casey will be able to withstand much more of this. Any more hard impacts like that, and it's going to be all over. If not, going to be dropping out of the competition altogether due to an injury. Knee to the hamstring, another one crossing it constantly. William Stiles in full control here. Casey takes the advantage and pushes, uh, whips William back inside the ring, but he gets caught with the spine buster. Rolls up with the leg, the inner leg. Interesting choice. One, two, and no. Yeah, should have gone with the uh, outer leg. That would have definitely secured more pressure. The seven star Larian drops down Casey again. He's not done yet. Measuring up. Casey gets back up to his feet, but gets a spine, spine buster. And again with the inner leg. He's trying to send a message right here. Two and a three. A quick solid victory, what really one-sided match all to get her. William demonstrating how it's done, how, how what's a good effective way of getting rid, get, getting getting the business taken care of. So the replays here we have the spine buster. Devastating maneuver with devastating force. Seven star Lariat that definitely shook Casey for the money. Here is your winner, Hammer, William Another solid victory for the Hammer tonight. Coming up to the seventh match of the night, we're gonna be getting a one-on-one -on -one fight between Magic Maggie and Selena Bota. Two very prominent women, two women who have definitely made a name for themselves in the Pro Masters. Gonna be real excited to see which one of them will be coming out on the top. Definitely a surprise to be certain. I guess never ha had an ally or a friend on the ring side. Well, I don't, I don't know if we can say say an ally or a friend this time around. As Diane Van Dam considers herself one of Maggie's greatest fans, getting the privilege now to join her on the ring side tonight. But but still, yeah, Maggie is definitely not known for making friends in the series. N not because of herself, but because everyone else just taking not not li taking a liking to her. Selena Bochamp! As 
Selena Bochamp, the women's martial arts champion. Always eager for a fight, definitely eager to prove herself. As she's still on, ho hoping this would be a title match, but no, no, no not any luck. We're gonna wait, wait for this for the next Thursday, Selena. But yeah, she's eager to display her talent, eager to defend the title. She has proven herself to be on top of the game to against the toughest of the women in the Brawl Masters. And no, no doubt about it, tonight everyone is gonna be looking at this match. The season 1 and 2 champion Magic Maggie. I'm all together the toughest contender ever versus Selena Bochamp. This victory, no matter who it goes to, will definitely be sending waves throughout the entire roster. Bella's rang and the fight is on. Magic Maggie versus Selena Bochamp. And Selena starting off with a heavy uppercut. Uh, as previously mentioned, joining on the ringside with Magic Maggie is Di Di Diane Van Dam, A person who had, had a match with Maggie this first day. And is ho hoping to get clo closer and closer. Hoping to uh, at least develop some kind of a uh, friendship. Some kind of an alliance with her, uh, it seems. Maggie allowing her to get, get on the ringside tonight, that definitely speaks volumes. First person to actually team up with Maggie in the friendly sense. But let, let's see whether or not the added support of Diane will be enough or will be Selena actually be doing the impossible and taking down one of the toughest women in the entire, well I would say the toughest women in the women's pro uh, division. Looks up the arm, brings it around. Fujiwara armbar submission holder being applied. Let's it go. Tremendous torque on the arm there, setting up now a hammer lock. Very nasty snap, and the shoulder getting targeted, getting the worst of it. Maggie definitely now keeping, trying to keep Selena down as best as possible. Selena countering with a dragon screw. And trying to get the fans on her side, definitely full on deserving. This is a next level fight going on right here. Chop and Maggie has been stunned for the momentary file. Sent in the corner. Selena missing the kick for some reason, but no, what, not sure what that was. But here comes beautiful acrobatic talent with, with the Hurricane Rana into the cover. Now we have one, we have kick out. Yeah. Testing the waters there. I, I I doubt Selena seriously thought she would be getting anything but a one count. Double knee face breaker, but lights going out and Maggie catching Selena from behind. Sending her in the corner now, turning her around. Is she's gonna be setting up here? No, what is she doing? She's setting up for a bulldog uh, DDT. Not a bulldog, but a DDT instead. Hooks up the leg, goes for the victory. We have one, two, and a kick out. Maggie able to temporarily turn things around, but whether or not that will be enough remains to be seen. Atomic drop now into a double leg drop. The extreme combination. Kick right onto the hamstring, sets up. Brings on the heel hook now. Yeah, you cannot count out the submission magician at any uh, moment of time. You gotta always assume that whenever, she, whenever she's wrapping herself around you, it's gonna be a torment on your body. Solid vertical suplex as Magic, Magic Maggie keeping on with the control. Never mind, a kick to the mid section from Selena. Gets a super kick to the face. Knee lift and now Maggie setting up. What is she doing? Oh, using the ropes, wraps herself around Selena. The whole body, the whole weight of the body dragging down onto the face. Maggie now climbs to the top rope. Selena is down and here comes the splash into the cover now. Here we have one, we have two, and we have a no shoulder up. Once again, that should have been a free count. Referee taking taking a good one second there before starting the count. Trying to set up the Black Widow, but Selena able to scout it out. Had it fully scouted, she knew at this time around Maggie would be preparing to end this up. Setting up with one vertical suplex, two vertical suplexes. This is gonna be a full on trifecta right here. Trifecta perfecto. Looking up a submission hold of her own. The head scissors have been locked in. And Maggie now 
not in a position you would imagine her. Yes, she's able, easily able to toss Selena off. You cannot expect a submission hold to be uh, do, doing it for Maggie. You cannot go for the he heavy strikes. Or in Selena's case, try, try to go for a bit of that high flying maneuver. Just be as agile as you can. Try to avoid being caught. Picks up Maggie again. Counter. Maggie now with the control. Lift up another atomic uh, drop into a double leg drop. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover again. We have one and a kick out. Yeah, I did not expect anything as I would have been surprised if that would have resulted in anything more than a one count. Holding on to the neck and trying to track her opponent into the corner. Maggie preparing to set up onto the top rope now. Ooh, elbow to the face. Whatever Maggie was planning, it did not come true. Coming in with a springboard, missing. Completely overshooting with that one. So I've measured up. But unfortunately did not. Maggie now on the top rope. I want to go for the high flying himself. Missing the elbow. Hitting straight to the mat. Knee lift and Selena now famous her. Right in the center of the ring. There's no way out of Maggie for this one. Rolls up with the leg. We have one. We have two. And shoulder up. Able to get the shoulder up right before a free count. Selena not done yet. We all know. If the first famous or doesn't succeed, you go for the second one. Dropping the leg to the back of the head. Rolls up with the leg and goes for the victory one more time. If she's gonna do it, she's gonna defeat Maggie. No. Another two count. She cannot believe it. I cannot believe it, but definitely the frustration is showing up. Selena about to strike with the third time. No, Maggie not allowing the third time to come true. Setting up instead the Black Widow hold locked in. Selena taking her eyes off for a single second and that's gonna be costing her dearly. In a horrendous position here. This is all about survival at this point. Selena able to no. Yes, toe hold takedown. Beautiful. Never seen anyone take down Maggie with a toe hold like that from from the uh, Black Widow hold, but here we have. Selena just time and time again proving to be a full-on surprise knee lift into another famous sir That has got to be it Maggie just exhausted her best shot Selena coming in with yet another one of hers. No, it's still not enough Two counts still remaining absolutely incredible that Maggie has this kind of endurance Another knee lift setting up the four famous sir if you're keeping, yeah, that's that's right. That's the fourth famous sir in a short while. Two and a three. Well, now we have definitive proof of what it what it's what is needed to defeat Magic Maggie here. Not one, not two, but a total of four famous sirs. An excellent fight by these two, the top women in the roster. Selena offering her hand and. Maggie accepting a beautiful display of sportsmanship by the toughest women in the Brawl Masters. Moving on to the 8th match of the night, we're gonna be having a rematch from last week. It's gonna be Philip Buster once again going up against Thunderstorm Andre. clinging on to that belt that he fought so hard for at Brawl Mania and actually it was the professional martial arts title that was available at Brawl Mania but 
being the successor to that martial arts title, now rightfully belonging to Philip Foster. Not just that, he's not done yet. He must have come to a realization that the championship title is meaningless. If you're unable to constantly be proving yourself, constantly be defending your honor. And last week's loss definitely has done an impact on that. Well, at least he's still able to celebrate with the title, but let's be honest. Thunderstorm and Trey defeating him last week definitely to, uh, ma made a very hard impact on his credibility. Tonight, trying to set the record straight. Tonight, trying to redeem at least some of that uh, honor that he supposedly has. And his opponent from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 238 pounds, Thunder Storm Andre. Now, Thunderstorm Andre, uh, also another curiosity right here. Two weeks ago, he he made a surprise attack against against the Grand Prix champion and the season champion, Cutie by Cook, with the baseball bat breaking up his body into smithereens. Still unable to com uh, compete, according to the medical team. So really interesting. Yeah, but anyway, what I was about to say about Andre remains to be seen whether or not he's going to be go go after the Grand Prix title himself. Or if he's gonna be going after the martial arts title that Philip Buster is holding. Currently having beef with both the title holders here. I I I I, su I could su I, I su suppose the term ma many doors open for him right now. That that would be most suitable. Getting on with the mats here and the bell has rung and wait did it rung? I did not hear the clinging. But wait a minute, turning on the ringside, that's Cutie by Cook, the Grand Prix Master, the Grand Prix Champion, and the Season 3 Champion all together. Joining on the ringside, on the, uh, looks like on the Philip Foster's corner here. What is. Yeah, I said that he's not ready to co uh, compete, but that doesn't stop him from appearing on the ringside. Hopefully, he's not going to be interfering on the match here. La last week, we had him t uh, coming in from the audience all of a sudden, sneaking in from the audience. To watch Andre fight, try to cause a distraction, but ended up getting even more hurt after Andre sent Philip right at him. So let's see, let's see whatever whatever will come out of this one. Philip sending Andre to the outside and comes rushing in. Countouts are illegal, so if this ends up in a distance count, it's gonna be this qualification sending Andre back inside the ring. And come, following suit, he comes. Claps to the top rope. Andre lying hopelessly on the ground. Ooh, and gets the moonsault. Oh, and already setting up with the British longbow hold. The signature maneuver, driving in those knees to the back. This could end in a real quick tap out. No. Andre able to force it, uh, uh, pick off the lock and able to escape. Philip hitting nothing but hitting the back elbow, sidestepping out of the way. Andre now getting control of the mats here. Lining up, elbow to the back, springboarding another one. And Philip goes down. Now who would have, who would have thought that this kind of an alliance, Cutie by Cook and Philip Foster? Definitely, definitely something I would have had expected, but I suppose a common enemy is a good reason to unify. Andre climbing to the top, but Philip Foster back up to his feet. Better what's out. Double axe handle straight to the top hat. Sets up and pulls right on the arm. Shoulder targeted with a dislocation intention. Andre picks up Philip, gets countered. Philip now sharp kick, and with that, able to send Andre onto the rope. Coming in. Oh, both of them crashing against one another. Taking out of the way. Shoulder block. Another one just launching himself at Philip, getting a good amount of momentum here, setting up the sidewalk slam. Slamming the body down and goes for the lateral press here. We have one, we have two, and a kick out. Not quite there yet, not quite enough for a free count, but definitely starting to take control and definitely start, starting to turn things around. 
And this will definitely turn things around if it's successfully gonna be connected. Yeah, the lightning fist striking down. Ooh, ducking out of the way. Philip now. Yeah, the lightning fist was not enough. It was a heavy impact, but not enough to keep Philip under control. Who now sets up the gentleman's clutch. Dropping down Andre on his back. Hooks up the leg and goes for the victory. We have one, we have two, and kick out at two. The thunderstorm has not been quelled yet. T time to keep on, time to mount up even more pressure on the man. Solid end security hitting the mark. Right onto the neck as Philip keeps on with the strikes. Beautiful Pele kick. Dropping down Thunderstorm Andre. Right on his back. Philip on the top rope. This could be a make or break move movement right here. Comes in with the corkscrew and it does not pay off. Definitely the break moment has come. Well, kick to the midsection, allowing Philip to keep up with the control. Never mind the elbows forcing the separation on Andre now. With the advantage, missing the punch, not the second one. Heavy strikes after another. Lifting up to a fireman's carry now, setting up. Drops down, throat first under the rope. Picks up Philip again, lifting up. And here comes the blue thunderbomb into the cover. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Thunderstorm and Trey securing a victory. And with that note and about it, sending a message not only to Philip but also to Cutie by Cook. So the replays here, here we have the first cover. Two, but so uh, not quite enough for a free count. Gentleman's clubs and would have thought that would have been it for Andre, but no, he was able to re resurface after that. And then the finishing blue thunderbomb. Heavy impact with no way out of that one. Here is your winner, Thunder Storm Andre. With that, the stage has definitely been set for Brawl Masters 100. Will Thunderstorm Andre go after the martial arts title? Will he defeat Philip Buster once again? Or is he gonna be stepping up the challenge? Is he gonna be going after Cutie by Coop and the Grand Prix Championship title? We'll find out next first day. With that, it's time for the main event of tonight. And it's gonna be once again a rematch between the Kelly Baker and Anna Cross. The war between the Bakers and the new, new Foundation continue on with Anna holding the line. Alright, here we go. The main event time has come. And once again, stepping into the ring. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring from the 90s, Kelly Baker. Wait a minute. There's Anna Cross, but there's also Amaya Grace, the leader of the new foundation. She wasn't supposed to be in this match, and she wasn't be, I didn't know she would be all, all around, but coming in, circling around Kelly, what is she? And now Kelly levitated for some reason. What? what what is going on here? Okay, back to back to Earth. That well, that was weird. Oh, and heavy elbow sending her, sending her in the corner. Slap. And a cross here to enforce, or I don't know, making sure that Marfa doesn't get involved in this, or uh, here to play back up for Amaya, who's just playing it out against Kelly here. Slap to the face. Ooh, Kelly able to counter. Yeah, Amaya Grace has not been has not been seen. After Marfa Baker took her out in the in the coming up to the fi final weeks of the Brawl Masters season three. Now going after Kelly here. Kelly struck down repeatedly. Now gets a leg caught. 
fist and Amaya turning things around. Sharp, stiff punch to the face. I'll definitely send a message. Dropping down the young baker. Yeah, as it, as it says right there, Brawlmasters has finished. With that, the main event for tonight is off. Kelly Baker unable to continue and actually compete tonight with that surprise sneak attack from the new foundation, who definitely are now back. And with this declaration of war, gonna be setting out against the Bakers in the Pro Masters 100. The paper review event coming next Thursday. I'm gonna be seeing you then. But for now, I've been your host, Kubari Barta, and this has been Pro Masters. I wish all of you the very, very good rest of your Sundays. Good night.